Okay, well, all right, let's get started, guys. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, it's been a really good lineup of speakers so far, and thank you guys for taking the time to come see this one. I know there's a couple of good ones I'm looking forward to, Carlos in the other room. Uh, who went to the Learn to Be a Pen Tester class earlier today? Anybody here? All right, cool. How was it? Good? Yeah? Excellent. Awesome. Um, well, I'm hoping that I can... Whoa. <laughs> That's you? Okay. Perfect. So I'm hoping that I can provide you some tools and uh, just impart my knowledge on you guys so the stuff that you might have learned in the class or if pen testing isn't your primary duty in your job uh, as a way in which you can use it to achieve your other goals. So let's get started. The goals of the talk is to create a realistic uh, environment that's portable and challenging. And by that, I mean I want it to be as realistic as possible. Like it could, um, we can use virtual machines to create your production environment, mimic your domain. Uh, replicate your standard config on your workstations. At my job, I uh, use the VMware P2V tool so I can actually test against our actual uh, production machines, basically. A lot of the tools I'll show with you are free, so you should be able to create a lab of your own for free, basically. And what I want to do is uh, share some new skills with you guys and then maybe get a conversation started at the end so we can share knowledge and impart it and expend, uh, extend the profession, basically. So the audience that I'm hoping you guys are is uh, basically people who want to do pen testing that might not have done it in the past, like a security analyst, a security auditor, maybe people who are new to pen testing, just start into a career jump or whatever, systems administrators. The reason behind that could be compliance or just knowledge. I mean, a lot of the new laws, well, both regulatory laws, uh, legal, legal laws, <laughs> um, contractual agreements, things like that, require pen testing as part of uh, what you need for compliance nowadays. So that was the big kicker for me. And I am Sam Goddett. I'm a security analyst with the University of Maine system. So uh, this Kentucky weather is nice. There's about three feet of snow up in Maine. I'm just kidding. It's actually beautiful in Maine this time of year, but this Kentucky weather is a nice change from what I'm used to up there. Uh, and so what I do day in and day out is risk assessments, uh, threat and vulnerability management, incident response, things like that. And I'm using penetration testing as a means to basically verify the results from the vulnerability scans that, as we see. Uh, it helps me prioritize so I don't take this huge list of the Nessus output and just have to fix all of them. We can see which ones are exploitable and which ones are, have real world implications if it doesn't get fixed. So thanks to virtual machines, you can basically have a whole fleet of computers running on your one computer. Uh, you really just need modest hardware requirements. A bunch of RAM really is all that I've found I really need. And a dual core, triple, or quad core processor helps. Uh, within the, basically all of the VM toolkits, snapshots are a great way in which you can bounce back and forth between patch versions and testing new applications and things like that. Uh, another beautiful thing about the virtual machines is you are in control of everything. You can uh, do packet captures without pissing anybody off. You can uh, inject packets, do packet crafting. You're really in control of the whole environment, whereas if you were to do some of these things at your work environment, you might you know, piss off the security team, the network team, lose your job, whatever. Okay, so um, the tool I will be using is VMware Fusion. It's not a free tool, but VirtualBox, Zen, I mean, you can use basically whatever virtual machine hypervisor you want. Uh, they all roughly do the same thing. I just happen to have a license for Fusion kicking around. Here's a picture of my poor, poor laptop running eight VMs. I think my, uh, my fans were cranked, my CPU was pegged at 100. Uh, I don't recommend running that many all at once. I mean, I think I woke up the kid with all the fans spinning. Um, just one note, live CDs in VMware might act a little weird. Uh, the disks kind of auto unmount, so just be aware of that when you're running through the tools. Just one second, it's hot in here, huh? <laughs> As you uh, create your own little sub-networks and get your test bed going, really, it's a good idea to do it in a host-only or NATed environment. These tools are uh, vulnerable by design, and you really don't want to expose that to the internet as a whole. I mean, the root passwords are known. You don't want to expose yourself at that regard if you can help it. So make sure you use a NATed environment or host-only as the VMware tools, the verbiage changes a little bit. 
Uh, it's possible to have multiple DHCP servers, so you can do some kind of cool things like that. I have one that I'll be showing of a 192.168 class range, then another 172 range, so you can really create many networks within your one machine. Uh, another thing worth mentioning is if you want to do more than just systems level auditing or testing or pen testing really, you can do uh, network based with um, Cisco Packet Tracer or GNS3 and really replicate your network infrastructure as well and do some testing against that. It's not as robust as having the real hardware, but if you can carry it around in your laptop, it works out pretty well. So this is just a snapshot of the environment I had running on Armitage. You can see that there's a pretty good mixture of stuff, including my work station that as my work default image from the university. So I can do testing against that without throwing my actual machine in jeopardy of owning the box, basically. And we will be using um, Utility and the Metasploit Unleashed. You probably heard of both of those, and uh, both of them were created by basically the guys who put on the show, so, so thank you. <laughs> um, the Utility framework is uh, for the OWASP top 10 testing, and it's a really awesome project. And the Windows XP machine I'll be showing you is based off of the Windows VM as described by the Metasploit Unleashed framework, or Metasploit Unleashed course, rather. A tool that probably needs no introduction, Backtrack Linux, it's a security distribution that uh, we'll be using to attack the VMs. Uh, it's just a standard Linux distro. Really. You can run it off of a VM or a, a live DVD. You can run it off of a thumb drive. You can install it to your hard drive. And uh, offensive security has a pretty extensive training package with it. Well, let's flip to a demonstration. I have to pause this temporarily. Okay, so this will be target one. It's just a standard Windows XP SP2 box. And the OWASP Broken Web Apps is a, another virtual machine we have going, but let's, hope you guys can see that okay. Let me make this full screen. check the IP on that guy. So we're going to run through the penetration testing execution model, uh, intelligence gathering, threat modeling, vulnerability analysis, exploitation, and then the post-exploitation steps. So we see that this Windows XP box is .133. I've preloaded some of the tools. They take a little bit to load. So I'll show you how you can load them up and everything. Let's start with the intelligence gathering and I hope that's a little easier to see. Just a standard Nmap. I mean, there's all kinds of different variables you can run, but let's keep it simple for this. And let's just search for all of them. Okay, so this is just a discovery scan, basically, on the common 1,000 ports. As I said, the first step in pen testing is really intelligence gathering, and Nmap is one of the best tools for that. Uh, so we will see that we're going to get replies from this guy. And let me log into Nessus. Nessus is a vulnerability scanner. I'm using the home feed for the learning purposes. Back here, we can see that we're starting to get results from the Nmap scan. Uh, all 1,000 ports are closed. There's the Max, the VMware Max. Uh, this scan will probably take another minute or two, but we can see that there is stuff on 172, 16, 235. So DerbyCon. I'm going to run it now. Uh, the different policies we can do, prepare for PCI, external, internal, or web app. Well, I typically do an external scan if just doing the first round of vulnerability scans because if you're not scanning your boxes, somebody else is. So <laughs> you might as well see it at the same way that they do. And same deal here, 172, 16, 235. We can scan them all. If we launched the scan, it would probably take about half hour or so on this machine, Net since it's not running on a full-on server, it's a VM on my machine. What the result would look like is under reports. You can see I did it the other day. And the box we were looking at, the Windows uh, XP one was the 133. Well, it looks like this guy's pretty wide open, huh? We have a couple high vulnerabilities on TCP 445. Uh, then we can save this information, download the report to a .nessus file. 
flip over to Metasploit. Again, I'm using the community version of Metasploit. Yeah, these, both these tools are great for learning purposes. They have free licenses if you're just trying to build up competency. So let's create a new project. No description, we'll use the full network range. So this will create the empty project within the Metasploit community. Uh, let's import the file that we exported from Nessus. Oh boy. <laughs> there we go. We're not going to exclude any addresses. I'll make it a little bigger. So this should go fairly quickly. And um, so Metasploit community will be the exploitation framework that we will use to uh, attack the 133 box. All right, eight new host added. Let's go here, eight host discovered. And there are a lot of different ways in which you can interact with Metasploit. There's the MSF console, the CLI, Armitage, which I'll show you in a little bit, and the uh, web framework from Rapid7. So here is that 133 host. We can see that it has 52 vulnerabilities. And we are going to load up a new module. I heard that the DerbyCon birthday cake is in the other room and they are using the MS-08067. <laughs> so let's use that in a little bit. It feels like forever waiting for this, huh? Okay. Just for fun right now, let's do the, I'll show you how to, ex or how to exploit Java 7 with the zero day from August 25th. So this one's very reliable, but it does require some user interaction on the attack, or the attackee. So we'll run the module. And like I said, this is all done right here within this web interface. You can use the command line version. Uh, I recommend learning the command line version, but just for the sake of this, we're using the web interface. So uh, the Java module uh, has a local IP which we could social engineer someone into clicking, which we'll go back to this Windows host, load up Firefox, nice, nice safe and secure browser. Whoops. Copy that. There we go. Oh, looks like nothing on the user part. So they'll probably just close it, not a big deal. We can see that we sent the stage though, so this box has been compromised. I should start a new session right here on 133. And there's a lot of different ways in which you can interact with the box after it's been uh, exploited. You can open up a command shell, a Windows command shell, or a Metasploit interpreter, which is the Metasploit interpreter. <laughs> uh, you can access the file system, you can do uh, a lot of post-exploitation modules. I highly recommend becoming very familiar with this tool. So let's open up a command shell. We can see that here we go. Now we can do all kinds of fun stuff with the box, although I don't like that we had to have any user interaction on this, on this guy to exploit it. So let's flip over to Armitage. We can see that we can now run commands just as if we were the user on the local box itself. Well, Armitage is another GUI for Metasploit written by Raphael Mudge. Ooh. So we can import the hosts that are on this network, which I've already done. And let's find the 133 right there. If you click on it and then attack, find attacks, it will run through the exploits list and find the ones that it's vulnerable to. And it makes it nice and easy. And actually, I believe that Armitage's, sorry about that, sort of tagline is fast and easy hacking. And it really does live up to the name. So attack analysis complete. Happy hunting. Sorry for that feedback. Okay, so let's right click, attack, SMB, and it, as I said, the MS-08067, it's uh, 
pretty much the uh, sort of canonical exploit within Metasploit. It basically always works against an SP2 box. Uh, we can luckily just use the default settings in this case. Launch. And here we go, we have another command shell down here, attempting to trigger the vuln, sending the stage. And watch right up here, as the box gets owned, oh, there we go, lightning bolts around it, perfect. Um, so it's an exploit from 2008, but it does still exist in the wild, so I like checking the university network for it, because some people are, have gone rogue and are still running Windows XP. Uh, and I'd imagine that's probably pretty typical in the corporate environment as well. So let's look at all the fun stuff we can do. We can escalate privileges, we can dump the hashes. Why not, let's do that. So click on view credentials. Right there, we have the whole list of all the, pass or the password hashes for the boxes, or for the users on this box, rather. So the beauty in this is that it required no user interaction. All we had to do was basically point at the box and say exploit. Well, let's look at the fun things we can do. With the interpreter shell, let me bump up the font size a little. Hope you guys in the back can see it. So we're looking at the processes. Um, to do what I'm about to do, we have to attach to a process so we can see one that's going to be running for a while, notepad, let's say the user we think is going to be uh, typing a doc for a while. So then we'll migrate the interpreter shell to that. Migrating to notepad. Doo -doo -doo. Migration complete. We'll get the process ID to check. There we go. Key scan start. So we're starting the keystroke sniffer against this guy. I don't think that I have my Wi-Fi connected. Okay, well here's that notepad process. Dear boss, I quit. Love, Sam. So key scan dump, we're dumping the captured keystrokes. Whoop, a lot of feedback, huh? Well, that one's not working, but luckily there's another way in which you can do it with the GUI. Explore, log keystrokes works just as well, so. Oh, did I? Oh, thank you. That's why we have experts in the room. Keep me on track. <laughs> so, um, although, we could do it the command line way. If we do right click and attack, we can uh, do the keystrokes right through a GUI window as well, which is pretty cool. Oop, let me get our image back. Well, there's a bunch of other fun stuff we can do as well. Let's uh, interact via just a Windows command shell. Make that guy a little bigger. Directory, okay, great. We'll check the route print. So, unknown to the user, we just created a new user account. Look at that. Oh, sorry, flipped over a little too fast. So we can log right into that. And this is just showing you uh, basically the power of Metasploit. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, we could be a little more malicious. Why not? Format C. Let's get rid of it. Who cares? Like I said, it's a snapshot, so we can revert right back to it. But. <laughs> Okay, so that is the conclusion of the Metasploit demo. I mentioned also that uh, the OWASP, or uh, the Mutilidae tool is a great way to learn about web app testing. So the OWASP Broken Web Applications Project, it has all kinds of training applications here, and these are ones that kind of walk you through, the WebGoat, Mutilidae, Ghost, they, they walk you through the process. Realistic, intentionally vulnerable applications, these are sort of real world models that you can learn against and old versions of real world applications. Let's play with this one for right now. Ooh. So one thing you can do is you can toggle hints and toggle security. So we can see the hint level one, script kitty. I'm just gonna turn it back off. Script level two, noob. So it'll show you even more further hints. It'll, it'll kind of walk you through the process. So if you're new to web application testing, this is a great way to learn about it. And security will also uh, ramp up or ramp down the strength of these uh, 
the top 10 examples. So let's go through domain one, uh, A1 SQL injection. Oh. I guess get me in front of a stage of people and I can't use a mouse, huh? So we are going to extract user data. If you mouse over, you see it'll give you a little hint. SQL injection may occur in any page interacting with a database. Let's toggle the hints a little more. Well, there we go. Down there, we have even more instruction. And that's a little bit more uh, instruction as well. Toggle hints to level two. And it basically tells you everything there is to know uh, about this one example. So it's a great way if you are new to web application testing. Let's uh, go ahead and I guess I'll give you the answer for this one. A lot of you guys probably know it. The canonical SQL injection example. View account details, look at that. We just dumped all the uh, user and passwords and signatures. So this is pretty cool and it's a really great way to learn. The next one, cross-site scripting. Uh, there's a blog example we can add to that as well. There we go. I actually did a, every time the user reloads the page, it'll load up DerbyCon rocks. And the example for that, bump it up a little. If you're not familiar with cross-site scripting, script. So there we go. And every time the user comes, it'll show them that DerbyCon does indeed rock. <laughs> and this is, you can reset it as well if, there, if you get to the end of it and want to kind of re restart. Well, let's flip back to the presentation. Uh, that was the OWASP uh, broken web applications, and this is uh, the Mutilidae. So OWASP broken web app project. It's really cool. It's how I've learned a lot of uh, the web app knowledge I know. Uh, that was just one example. That was the Mutilidae part of it. Uh, WebGoat's another good one. There we go. And then it's uh, free. You can get it on the, on the OWASP website. Go back. Uh, here's a list of other VMs you can download and places in which you can look to get uh, targets to attack and learn with. The Damn Vulnerable Linux Project, the Metasploitable from Rapid7, Ultimate Lamp, the DICE Project right here on the Hacking Dojo, and the OWASP Top 10, of course. And one of my favorites is the Microsoft Windows 90 Day Trials. They work great for 90 days. That's usually all I need. Uh, so here's a scenario from the DI's disk. This was one of the first uh, live images that I played with, so I have, I have fond memories of it. Um, it's a scenario, it's pretty real world. It probably looks pretty familiar as you're reading the text. Um, I recommend go do it if you want to learn about um, pen testing. It's a great example. So this one was pretty fun. I, I did it in one night. I was up all night doing it, and then uh, I went to bed, and my wife told me I was talking about packets all night long. So. <laughs> Sorry for her. Uh, other tools that you can use to attack, uh, the SANS information, the, what is this? The Investigative Forensics Toolkit, sorry. Uh, that one's great if you're trying to do forensics against a box. Yeah. Um, and then the Samurai Web Testing Framework. Uh, they have a terrific course, a packet of slides you can download that kind of walks you through. It's very similar to Backtrack with a course kind of attached to it. It's pretty cool. Uh, quick mention about Capture the Flag. DerbyCon has one going on and everybody should go do it. Uh, it's, the Capture the Flags are great. They give you sort of a real world practice and it really helps team building if you work together on it. Uh, Sans, I just wanted to give a mention of this. I went through the NetWars project uh, a couple months back and I highly recommend it. it. It really teaches you about vulnerability assessment, forensics, malware analysis, and just pen testing methodologies as a whole. It was a very great project. Uh, and the levels were kind of neat. The level one, it's just a virtual machine that you have contained on your own workstation. After you pass that, you kind of pivot to the internet. And then at the very last level, they call it castle versus castle. You're really attacking each other. It was, it was a really cool project. Uh, another shout out to the CCDC, uh, Forgotten Second CTF Time. They have a schedule. There's pretty much always a CTF going on nowadays. So there's really no excuse not to do it. I just went through the Stripe CTF also last month. And that one had a really great community around it. I thought it was a whole lot of fun. 
Uh, one thing to mention of the CCDC is that's actually going to be at the University of Maine this year. Oh, well, next year. It's um, March 8th through 10th up in Orno, Maine. So if any of you guys are there, give me a call and I'll buy you a beer. Uh, yeah, Maine is kind of chilly that time of year, but it's pretty nice in March. So that is it. Thank you uh, very much for coming. I had a whole lot of fun doing this. Um, yeah. So does anybody have any questions or, yeah, go right ahead. Any, uh, the question is he wants to do capture the flag, but he only has his tablet. Are there any tablet tools to learn? Does anybody have an answer for that? Yeah. iOS or Android? Uh, iOS or Android. Oh yeah. So yeah, the answer for that was you can install Backtrack on ARM, and that's that's a. Yeah. So does anybody have any other methods in which they started and got into pen testing? Yeah. Oh, question. Yeah, sorry. I will put them online, yeah. I'll throw them on escotet.com, or I can email them if you hit me up on Twitter or email. And uh, yeah, I tried to keep the links pretty, pretty relevant so you guys could go right to them, and I'll, I'll put it online, I'll email it to you direct if you want. <coughs> What's that? Sure, well here's the CCDC one and the CTF Forgotten Sec. I'll pause here for a little bit and then I'll flip over to the other one. And So boot to root.info? Awesome. 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 Yeah, so boot to root.info. Yeah, the de-ice was a great one to go through, and there are a ton more. There was, uh, I think, five levels to the de-ice one. Other resource. Here's um, a bunch of vulnerable targets. Yes. Uh, Meta, well, let me go to the mic. So the question was, uh, I outputted Nessus to my Nessus scans to dot Nessus, and what other formats will it output to? Uh, let's find out. Does anybody know the answer to that right off the top of their head? And map and XML? Yeah. Okay, and map dump and XML. Okay. Um, I, well, what, what, what's that, Casey? Yeah, so it's a rapid seven, yeah. Yeah, and I only picked Nessus. I have more familiarity with that. That's what we use at the university. So there, there are plenty of other ones, and you can actually get to them. Applications, Backtrack, Vuln Assessment, Vuln Scanners. So there's Nessus, OpenVAS, and Saint uh, integrated right into Backtrack. So does anybody else have any questions or ways in? Yes. On what? I'm not familiar with Black Buntu. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so Black Buntu sounds like another resource in which people could use for a similar to either the Samurai web testing framework or Backtrack. So yeah, I guess if you are new to pen testing and you really want to get into it, you're basically at a con full of pen testers, so just ask around. Everyone here seems super nice, so thank you very much. Any other thoughts or anything? Okay, thanks guys. Have a great time and...